Hey, Mike here. Stability AI just released what they call Stable LM2. It's a much smaller model than your typical 7B model. It's a 1.6 billion parameter model. And more specifically, it's an instruction tuned version. It incorporates multilingual data in English, Spanish, German. A lot of my audience is German, by the way. So shout out to uh, Germany, I suppose. Italian, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. They also claim that it leverages recent algorithmic advances in language modeling to strike a favorable balance between speed and performance, enabling fast experimentation and iteration with moderate resources. If we take a look at their little graph here that they've made, you can see a 7B model, the Mistral 7B Instruct model to be specific, is the red most advanced one of what they're showing here. Now, Stable OLM looks like it is outperforming everything else that's shown here regarding STEM, humanities, writing, role play, and reasoning. Phi 2, however, does outperform it a little bit when it comes to math and coding and extraction as well. If you search for Stable LM2 within LM Studio, you are hit with all of these releases that just occurred today. So with that being said, I will be downloading and testing out Stable LM2, the Zephyr model here, 1.6. And as always, I will do the 5-bit slight loss of quality. And of course, I will be testing this later on within this video. So stick around. One thing you do have to keep in mind when you are using this model is that there is a specific licensing that has to occur when it comes to non-commercial and commercial use. You need to have a Stability AI membership. Now, if you are confused as to what that means, then it probably doesn't really have much to do with you. It is more important for those who are running businesses that would potentially use Stability AI's new release for their product. Here you have these little membership options. If you're just using it for personal use and research, it's completely free. Now, if you are a creator or developer with less than 1 million in annual revenue and less than 1 million in institutional funding and less than 1 million monthly active users, all three of these must apply. Then you pay $20 per month. Everything else, of course, that falls under the enterprise range, we're nearing completion here. I almost forgot how fast this downloads because of course this is only a one gig, around a gig file. Let's open it up on the local inference server here. Oh no, that's not good. It does say that I have failed to load the model because we have the wrong number of tensors. It expected 340, but it only got 268. Yeah, unfortunately, it seems like I won't be able to run this model at this current time, even though it is a GGUF model. When we take a look at the model performance of Stable LM2, you can see that its average is still below Phi 2 by about 10%. Now, keep in mind, this model is by no means supposed to be used for everyday tasks. The whole point of the model is that its compact size and speed lowers the hardware barriers, allowing more developers to participate in the generative AI ecosystem. So long story short, it is for those that do not have the computational power that something like a 7B model requires. We can also test the model on Hugging Face, so let's go ahead and do that. So here we have loaded the Stable LM2 Zephyr 1.6B. Let's just start off with a simple question. Tell me what you know about the Obsidian app. Let's see how fast it responds. Now keep in mind, this response is happening on an A10G. So response times when it comes to online models mean nothing. Let's see what the answer is here. Obsidian is a web and mobile app that helps you remember and organize thoughts, ideas, and information. That's all correct. Sports Markdown, that's right. Next, I'm going to ask it to give me a data view query that I can use to find all of my notes that have the word vid in their title. Let's see how it does here. Right off the bat, it's talking about Obsidian's web interface, which Obsidian does not have a web interface. So it seems like it is hallucinating. And of course, this in general does not make any sense when it applies to Obsidian's data view plugin. So it's safe to say that this model is pretty much useless for anything Obsidian generation related. Let's do one more prompt just for the fun of it. The question being, what are the best plugins to have for Obsidian for a beginner? And before we even read this response, you can see that the formatting is off and the answers are pretty much just random features that Obsidian already has, such as Markdown Preview, Markdown Editor, Search, Tag Management, Note Syncing. I mean, yeah, the model has a general idea of what we're talking about, but it has no clue when it comes to community plugins, for example. It's just, again, hallucinating an appropriate response just to satisfy the generation. So yeah, that's about it for this model. When it comes to my closing thoughts on it, 
I would say it's a waste of time. This, in my opinion, is a primary reason why it's a waste of time. These models should be open source, but to play devil's advocate here, the way these companies provide for themselves is by promising their investors revenue models that will give them a high ROI. Not every company can be as open source as Meta is right now. As extremely weird and ironic it is to say that, that's just the case. Mark Zuckerberg, when it comes to Llama 2, Llama 3, I mean, he's just based. All you have to do is just take a look right here. Meta is aiming to become the open agent AGI mega company. Here's Mark Zuckerberg himself talking about it. Today, I am bringing Meta's two AI research efforts closer together to support our long-term goals, building general intelligence, open sourcing it responsibly, and making it available and useful to everyone in all of our daily lives. The next generation of services requires building full general intelligence. That needs advances in every area of AI from reasoning to planning to coding to memory and other cognitive abilities. The opportunities are so great that we should open source and make it as widely available as we responsibly can so that everyone can benefit. And we're building an absolutely massive amount of infrastructure um, to support this. By the end of this year, we're gonna have around 350,000 NVIDIA H100s or around 600,000 H100 equivalents of compute if you include other GPUs. We're currently training Llama 3, and we've got an exciting roadmap of, of future models that we're going to keep training responsibly and safely too. People are also going to need new devices for AI, and this brings together AI and the metaverse. Because over time, you know, I think a lot of us are going to talk to AIs frequently throughout the day. And I think a lot of us are going to do that using glasses, because glasses are the ideal form factor for letting an AI see what you see and hear what you hear, so it's always available to help out. Ray-Ban Meta Glasses with Meta AI are already off to a very strong start. And overall, across all this stuff, we are just getting started. So yeah, Zuckerberg is really going all in when it comes to not only open sourced AI, but also his spin on AR, which is augmented reality. Hence him mentioning the glasses and virtual reality technology at the end there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts and just comments on all of this down below. I will see you again in the next video.